What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to analyze the tape of the Dallas Cowboys offense from the passing game to the run game to the offensive line play to Terrence Steele's multiple sacks given up. I would make the argument this was one of the best offensive performances I've seen from the Cowboys. And I know from a points perspective, it's only 23 points. Some people will say that's, you know, really not a whole lot of points. But do keep in mind that the Cowboys defense did not score anything this game. The special teams did not really help them. And on top of that, there are five plays that I would make the argument flip this entire game. From the three fumbles that basically bounced the Eagles way to the schoonmaker catch that was short of the touchdown to Dak Prescott's foot being out of bounds, I would make the argument those five plays as well as some of the sacks kind of given up towards the end of the game by Terrence Steele ultimately flipped the entirety of the game. But we're not here to make excuses. We're here to watch tape. And we're going to start with this fourth and one here. A key moment within the game, the score is seven to zero. The Cowboys obviously want to be aggressive and you're going to run a fake slant which is ultimately going to get turned into a corner and i love the design concept of this play because on fourth and one most of the time you'd expect someone to go short but this time the cowboys ended up flipping it from a slant to corner and dak prescott does a good job throwing it to cd lamb in which he's able to catch the football and convert the first down 29 yards on this one on top of that i felt like the offensive line did a pretty good job keeping the quarterback clean Giving him enough time on this one. Nice clean pocket. Dak Prescott delivers. I'm very fired up for this film break though. We're going to get into a lot of different plays. Let's get right into it. Check this play out. You got a 40 yard pass on third and two. Dak Prescott does a really, really nice job being able to climb the pocket. Step up to his right. Avoid the pressure. And he gives his tight end the shot to catch the pass. Uh, to me, one of the things that Dak Prescott has to do is... If there's a guy in coverage, one-on-one -on -one situations, whether it's C.D. Lamb or it's Jake Ferguson, you got to give the guys the opportunity to possibly make the play. You know, it is very, very imperative, in my opinion, to give guys 50-50 chances. One of the things that a guy like Patrick Mahomes does, a guy like Jalen Hurts does, is they give their best playmakers and Travis Kelsey and A.J. Brown these 50-50 shots. And it's a great way to have success. 50-50 shots are oftentimes favoring the offense. If you don't catch the pass, maybe you get a pass interference. But I love this by Dak Prescott here to be aggressive. Uh, the broadcast crew did mention that maybe Dak Prescott saw the flag, therefore he just kind of threw it up there. I disagree with that. I think it's very hard for Dak Prescott to be able to process a flag getting tossed in the middle of an NFL play. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But Prescott does a really nice job. And I think the offensive line does a pretty good job as well. Zach Martin has a one-on-one -on -one with Jalen Carter here. He's going to do a really nice job getting underneath Carter and really anchoring down against Jalen Carter. And to me, this is perfect. This is exactly how you want to play it. If you're Zach Martin, you want to anchor down, and you want to make Carter go to your outside shoulder. You want to make him go around, which ultimately allows the quarterback to step up. That's the perfect way to play this scenario here. Great job by Zach Martin. And Dak Prescott's able to get the ball out. And Jake Ferguson makes a great catch, right? He adjusts his body back to the football, makes the catch. He's able to pick up 40 yards on this one. It's a really, really nice shot. Alrighty guys, so you got a first and 10 right here. Terrence Steele is ultimately going to allow the 11 yard sack on this one. Uh, this was one of the four sacks that Pro Football Focus credited him with uh, against the Philadelphia Eagles. And we're going to talk about this first and foremost. The slide is going to be to the right. I feel like one of the things that the Cowboys did was they did slide a lot towards Jalen Carter. So what ends up happening is because of the guard here and the center here sliding over to number 98, ultimately you're going to have one-on-ones here. Now, Riddick is obviously one of those guys that loves to use speed. So he's going to start to the outside and he's going to hezzy and he's going to jump back to the inside. And this is a big part of the recovery phase for Terrence Steele. Now, he may look great when it comes to run blocking. He may look great when it comes to pass pro most of the time. But there is a scenario in which an ACL injury does slow you down, right? And specifically slows you down with is your ability to move left or right. And this is a great example of that. On this one, Riddick's going to obviously speed rush to the outside first. Terrence Steele is going to start to get vertical in his set. Riddick's going to jab hard with the left foot. He's going to come back to the inside. And Terrence Steele's just not able to fully recover and get back in front of Hassan Riddick on this one. And Riddick just uses speed to basically get around Steele. And you guys will see as we continue through this film breakdown that this is kind of what's happened a number of times to Terrence Steele. And that's not just this game. I'm analyzing his stacks from previous games. This is kind of the same thing that's been happening to him. And we'll get into it as we kind of continue forward. But he's struggling right now with speed. He's struggling right now with change of direction. And that is expected when you just tore your ACL less than 12 months ago. So on that sack, Cowboys lost 11 yards. And then on second and 21, 
The Cowboys ran for seven yards, and now they're at the point where it's a third and 14. And Dak Prescott's going to build the Dallas Cowboys out. To me, this is such a nice job by Dak Prescott. Uh, and there's, you know, within this play, there's definitely something that I think a lot of people are going to talk about. And I definitely saw the broadcast crew kind of point it out. If you guys want Jalen Tolbert in the middle of the screen here, you're going to have a linebacker who's basically playing man-to-man coverage on him. And that linebacker is going to try to press Jalen Tolbert, and he misses. And Tolbert is wide-ass open in the middle of the field. But unfortunately, you have pressure off the right edge once again. And to me, that pressure right there does not allow Dak Prescott to get the ball out. And Prescott does a great job avoiding the pressure, getting out of there, and still hitting C.D. Lamb for 20 yards, right? You still convert the third down. But this play could have technically been a lot worse had Dak Prescott not done what he does within this play. So big, big shout-out to Dak Prescott. A really nice job. Steele has to do a better job. Once again, he's going to get beat. This time by a speed move to the left. Hassan Riddick does a great job with the chop. So you just got to do a better job if you're tearing Steele on this one. But of course, Dak Prescott does get out of the pocket, avoids the pressure, and picks up 20 yards. It's a really, really nice job right there. So that last drive ended up in a touchdown. And now the Cowboys on the very next drive end up in a third and 15 after another sack. And Dak Prescott's going to once again bill out the Dallas Cowboys. And I shouldn't use the word bill out, right? He's a NFL quarterback. He's getting paid the big bucks. But I felt like Dak Prescott easily had his best game yesterday against the, the Philadelphia Eagles. I would make the argument that I have not seen Dak Prescott play better, cleaner, uh, more poised in the pocket, willing to take those big chances downfield. Uh, and Prescott really delivered yesterday. This is a really nice job as well by C.D. Lamb on his route. He, he runs this route in which it looks like he's going to run an out, but he ends up stopping himself. And it's just a really nice route run by C.D. Lamb. It's a great job here. You're going to see him uh, pretend like he's about to hit the outside. And he basically stops a really nice route. And Dak Prescott delivers a beautiful pass to C.D. Lamb. And Lamb almost gets the first. He picks up 14 yards. Of course, the Cowboys do go for it on fourth and one. And you're going to see Dak Prescott hit Jake Ferguson Right across the middle of the field for 11 yards. Really nice pass. Jake Ferguson, C.D. Lamb, Dak Prescott. That was the connection yesterday. And I think that's kind of what we expected coming into the season. That was where the offseason hype was, right? Jake Ferguson got a lot of offseason hype. And he showed up in a big way yesterday against the Eagles. I also want to give credit to left tackle Tyron Smith. The guy had a monster game yesterday for the Dallas Cowboys. You basically heard nothing yesterday from that left side. There was almost no pressure. Did not even hear Josh Sweat get mentioned once. And you see plays like this where Tyron Smith just straight up takes number 94 and puts his ass into the ground. I mean, to me, this is such a nice job right here to snatch down and really break the contact. Uh, Sweat's going to get the left hand here into Tyron Smith. He's going to try to lift him up. And Tyron Smith, with his right hand, is going to just straight up snatch him right there downwards. He's going to remove the leverage that Sweat had, and Sweat ends up in the ground. That's a really, really nice, really nice rep, if you guys ask me, by the left tackle. Future Hall of Famer really stepped up yesterday. Let's go ahead and get to the next snap. Check this 15-yard run out by Tony Pollard. A really, really nice shot by the offensive line. Really good job by pretty much all the guys across the board. Uh, I think the Dallas Cowboys have to get back into running the football. I know at the moment, it seems like they're more of a pass-first team with Dak Prescott and the way Mike McCarthy likes to run things. They got to get back to establishing their identity of running the football. And I say that because I think this offensive line has the potential to be the best offensive line when it comes to run blocking. I mean, to me, when you watch this play right here and you watch Tyron Smith get out in front of Jordan Davis here, Tyler's going to double team him, cut off number 41. Beatish is going to double here. Zach Martin's going to take that over, and then Beatish is going to get up to 52, and you just see the lane develop. This stuff right here is freaking impressive, in my opinion. And this is the type of success that this offense line can have. I mean, look at that lane kind of just develop right on the inside. The Dallas Cowboys have to establish the ground game. It's going to help them so much more. And some people will say it could limit the explosiveness that this offense can have. I disagree. Tony Pollard is arguably your second best offensive player right after C.D. Lamb. From an explosiveness perspective, the guys are very, very good, and I think the Cowboys really have to get back to running the football more. Check this play out. You got a first and 10. The Cowboys are going to come out into a three-by-one formation. The running back's going to go into motion on this one, and you're going to see C.D. Lamb do a really, really nice job creating some separation. To me, this is such a beautiful route by Lamb. It's really a choice route. He has the ability to whip it back to the outside if he wanted to. 
But the Cowboys have done this a number of times, and I've seen this play have so much success over the course of the season. I absolutely love the fact that you're going to put CeeDee Lamb in a one-on-one situation against a safety or slot corner or whoever it is, and just let him run this route. This one picked up 20 yards. It's a really, really nice play call. Love this. Seen it about once a game so far this season. The Cowboys should run this five times a game. I think it's going to hit every single time. All right, you guys, let's get into a sequence of two back-to-back plays. We're going to start with this third and four. I love the effort here by Dak Prescott. Prescott's going to try to score here. He's going to try to go over the top. Uh, he's not able to actually get in, but I still love the effort. I love the fact that this guy's willing to put his body on the line to score points. Uh, this score at the moment is 17 to 28. The Cowboys need a touchdown in this moment. There's about 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Third and four, they picked up three yards. And then on fourth and one, they're going to end up throwing it to Luke Schoonmaker. And the Cowboys just aren't able to get this. And I know some people are going to talk about, should this have been a pass interference? There was obviously contact before the tight end even got the ball. Uh, should the should this have actually been a touchdown? Because of the fact that Schoonmaker didn't necessarily make the entirety of this catch, right? Like he didn't catch this ball the second that the knee was down, right? He caught this pass after the knee was already down. Like when did he actually complete the catch? And I'm not going to argue it because it was already called. The game's already over. I did actually disagree with this the more I looked into the replays, the more I thought about this. To me, Schoonmaker actually makes the catch not when the knee touches down. I would argue that the knee touched down well before he actually secured the catch. And I would argue that as he actually got possession of the football, I would argue that he was a lot closer to scoring than not. And ultimately, I felt like this was a big moment in the game. Because had the Cowboys even gotten a field goal, the score would have been 28 to 20. But because they went for the touchdown and they didn't get it, I felt like this was one of the moments within the game that ultimately cost him the game. You got a first and 10, the score still 17 to 28. Dak Prescott's going to deliver a nice pass to C.D. Lamb at the top of your screen. Uh, to me, what sticks out about this play is the block by Brandon Cooks towards the end of this play. I mean, it does not get better than the block that you're going to see at the top of your screen by Brandon Cooks. You can see that Darius Slay has a shot at tackling C.D. Lamb. And Cooks is kind of going to just get in the way there, and he's going to ultimately seal off the cornerback. And I know the play only picked up an additional five yards, but, you know, next time it may be a touchdown based off the block by Cooks. And I don't want to not give credit to Cooks because to me, it's such a nice block. It does not get better than this. It's a great job. Also, the offensive line does a pretty nice job. If you guys analyze the guys up front, they keep the quarterback clean. They process the defensive line game on the left side here. Martin does a good job passing off. Will Williams comes back to Riddick, gets enough of Riddick that he ultimately throws the angle that Riddick had to the quarterback off. It's a nice job. 16 yards. Let's get into the next snap. You got a 32-yard pass here by Dak Prescott, and I think the offense line definitely deserves a lot of credit for this one, as does Jalen Tolbert, as does Dak Prescott for keeping his eyes downfield. Uh, this is the type of stuff that I absolutely love to watch. I mean, look at the offensive line here. Really give the quarterback the time to ultimately get this completed. A uh, shout-out to the guys up front. I mean, they really held it down for Prescott, and Prescott is ultimately able to get Jalen Tolbert the ball. 32 yards on this one, gets them all the way down to the two-yard line. And of course, two plays later, after an illegal formation, lost five yards, first and seven. Dak Prescott's going to once again deliver, this time to Jalen Tolbert, to the right side of the screen. Tolbert's able to break free from the cornerback at the bottom. And Dak Prescott, again, extends the play, makes it happen. Really, really nice shot by Prescott. And of course, the very next play was also a big moment of the game. You can make the argument that one of the main reasons why the Cowboys lost was because Dak Prescott ended up stepping out of bounds. And I don't fault Dak Prescott for this one. You know, you don't want to take a big hit. You got a guy coming from the backside and you're running to the corner pylon. And sometimes it just doesn't work in your favor. And this was one of the moments where it didn't work for the Dallas Cowboys, right? The right foot is going to end up hitting out of bounds. And I would have loved for Prescott to be able to convert this because not only do you not have 25 points, but on the very next drive, you could have settled for a field goal and sent the game into overtime. And ultimately, the Cowboys weren't able to do that. And a part of that was this play as well as the scoot maker that wasn't called the touchdown, as well as the fumbles. And I know we didn't get into the fumbles in this video, and we're not going to. Uh, but, you know, if the, those fumbles bounced one way or the other, the game goes in the favor of the Cowboys. Three fumbles. 
that the Eagles had. Every single one recovered by the Eagles. I think that's a massive moment of the game that a lot of times is overlooked. I want to wrap this video up, but I want to get into the final drive of the Dallas Cowboys because Dak Prescott had a bunch of really, really high quality passes. Now, there are actually two drives because the Cowboys did get the ball back once again with like 40 seconds left. Uh, but you see this really, really nice play here by Dak Prescott. He's going to be able to get C.D. Lamb ball. This one hit for 21 yards. And then you got another one. This was third and 10. Once again, Dak Prescott's going to hit Jake Ferguson right across the middle of the field. He's going to pick up 12 yards on this one. Now, after that last play, first and 10, you're going to get back-to-back -back sacks. And I felt like this was one of those moments where uh, Terrence Steele ultimately has to do a better job and there's no excuses at the end of the day Terrence Steele got beat right on this one he's gonna get beat by number 55 notice how 55 is gonna go upfield first which is a speed move he's gonna turn it back to the inside and Terrence Steele is just not able to make the recovery to ultimately get out in front of Brian Graham and this was the first and 10 sack and then you got a second and 17 and once again Dak Prescott's gonna go down now this one's not necessarily on Terrence Steele. I, I would make the argument this one is more so Jalen Carter beating the left guard. Keep in mind, you know, Jalen Carter is one of the best defensive linemen in the NFL. And, you know, that's not saying something negative about Tyler Smith. I think Tyler Smith's one of the best guards in the NFL. But Jalen Carter's a special, special type of player, and it's because of plays like this. Now, Jalen Carter doesn't technically get the credit for the sack. Uh, the guy that actually gets credit for the sack is going to be Brandon Graham once again, who's lined up over Terrence Steele. Uh, but you can make the argument that it was Jalen Carter that forced the sack. Now, of course, you know, do note, it's not like Brandon Graham was shut down on this play. Graham ultimately still did get pressure. Terrence Steele does get uh, overpowered on this one. He's not able to step back to the inside. And Dak Prescott does go down. So you have back-to-back -back sacks right there. And to me, this was also one of those moments that basically lost the Cowboys the game. Because on the very next play, keep in mind, this is third and 21 now. The Cowboys do pick up 13 yards, but they're still in a fourth and long situation. And you'll see Dak Prescott's going to throw it to Jalen Tolbert at the bottom of your screen. And I know some people will disagree with it, but you do got to keep in mind, you know, initially when the play began, you can see that it looks like C.D. Lamb in the slot here is going to get some sort of double team or at least some sort of bracket, which is what it initially looks like. And I feel like based off of that, Dak Prescott looks off, right? Dak Prescott does look up to the top of your screen. And it looks like there's some sort of bracket here. And it makes sense to go away from that. And he's going to go away from that. He's going to ultimately hit Jalen Tolbert. It's not completed. But the Cowboys do get one more opportunity. With 46 seconds left, they're going to take a deep shot to Michael Gallup. And they're going to pick up 36 yards on the deep shot attempt. And the Cowboys are cooking, right? You get 36 yards on this one. Dak Prescott's going to deliver another pass. This one hits for 10 yards to Jake Ferguson. A great job by Prescott to extend the play and be able to get Jake Ferguson the ball. On this one, the offense line does a fairly good enough job. I think the quarterback steps up, is able to climb, right, get out of there to the right a little bit. It is a longer developing play. And, of course, Jake Ferguson is able to catch the pass. You also got 15 extra yards because of the penalty. And you're going to get 15 yards right here by C.D. Lamb. Dak Prescott does a great job once again. Lamb's going to get out of bounds. And you're at the 10-yard line right now with, with 27 seconds left. And I think this was also a pivotal moment of this game. 27 seconds left. And Terrence Steele is going to lose. And once again, Dak Prescott's going to go down. I mean, to me, Terrence Steele has to do a better job. And I'm not making this video because I don't like Terrence Steele. Uh, I've been on record saying I think Terrence Steele is one of the best tackles in the NFL. But he has to recover. Right, these are the moments of a game that really matter. And I said this on my other YouTube channel talking about Terrence Steele's injury, but I felt like Terrence Steele should sit out for about half a season because the ACL injury slows you down. And you can see right now, Terrence Steele's not 100% recovered. He is a little bit slower. So speed moves to the outside or inside really impact him. Now, don't get me wrong. If it comes down to power moves, if it comes down to bull rushes, those type of things, Terrence Steele will shut people down. But when it comes to speed, the guy struggles a little bit. And I think last night we saw that multiple times on the two final drives, the drives that really matter. Terrence Steele ultimately gave up sacks on both drives. To me, it's not good enough. So the Cowboys had to hurry it up at this point. And with 11 seconds left, they snapped the football. Dak Prescott throws it up. Uh, and basically from that point, they only had five seconds left. And it just doesn't favor the Cowboys, right? They're going to end up picking up 20 yards, but it's just not enough because CeeDee Lamb does get tackled. Um, you know, 
I think yesterday the Dallas Cowboys offense looked a lot better to me. Right. I think there were a couple of issues to Terrence Steele, back to back sacks on, on key moments within the game. On top of that, the fumbles don't bounce your way, the schoolmaker touchdown, the Michael Gallup drop on third down, which we didn't technically cover, with over a minute left before the half ended, could have ultimately kept the drive going. There are so many moments within this game where the Dallas Cowboys basically lost themselves the game. And some of it was luck because we do cover a game of inches. But at the end of the day, the Dallas Cowboys did lose and the Philadelphia Eagles won. Now, just a final note, I actually thought the Cowboys offense played well. I think Dak Prescott had his best game of the season. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing and I will see you guys next time with another video.